So welcome back to the channel. I wanted to make a special video today that has to do with cybercrime reporting and statistics. So every year the FBI puts out this report. This is the one from the last year, 2019, uh, that's come out. And it's the Internet Crime Report. And basically what this is, is a 28 page document that the FBI compiles from all the data, all the reports that businesses or personal individuals send to them when they've had a cyber breach, uh, they've had a loss of funds. And this report is chock full of great information, especially as a business owner, to understand what are the threats? How have people and businesses been affected? Uh, and where do you lie in terms of the risk scale? So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. I'm gonna go over the highlights, save you some time instead of reading all of these 28 pages. Uh, we can just dive right into this together. Let's do it. Okay, so here it is, the 2019 Internet Crime Report. Now, this is, again, put out by the FBI Cybercrime Unit. And what it is, again, I'm going to save you a little bit of time instead of going through every single page and point to the highlights. But basically, what is the IC3? It is a website uh, that they have put together called IC3.gov. And in fact, you can see it pointed out right here on the screen. And IC3.gov is a reporting website. It's a reporting agency of the FBI that if you are a business or an individual that's had cybercrime and you've been affected, and uh, we'd strongly encourage that you report that. And the FBI really uses that data, and so do we as an industry, to understand what is the threat landscape, what type of threats are successful, what type of businesses are being targeted, what age groups of individuals. I mean, you'll see it really gets granular. Uh, and it helps us make sure that we're providing solutions to help safeguard and help minimize that. So this is a really quick snapshot. Uh, unfortunately, what this is telling me, if we take a look at these uh, graphics right here, we can see that both in terms of number of complaints, so basically incidents that have been reported, has gone up year over year. Uh, in 2019, it was almost half a million complaints. Unfortunately, the same goes for the actual financial losses. If we look at it, and again, IC3 started in 2015, um, it's gone up exponentially every year with a total of nearly $3.5 billion in reported losses. Now, that's super important to remember. I'm using the word reported. These are only losses that have been reported to the FBI. We know that there are companies that have losses or they have ransomware or they've wired money and they never report it to the FBI. So we have to assume that that number is, is actually higher in reality. But just in terms of reporting, it has gone up. So this is a quick little simple graphic about what the IC3 is. I kind of went over this already, but it's very important that if you are a victim of cybercrime or any cyber data breach to report it because it really helps bridge that private uh, and government sector together so that we can make sure we're understanding what is the actual data, what does the crime look like, and how do we help uh, prevent it in the first place? That's what we're about. So let's dive into some of the hot topics for 2019. Unfortunately, I have to say the hot topics haven't changed. They've only grown. And as much work as we are doing and companies like us are doing with the private sector, uh, again, these complaints and the losses keep growing, which only tells me companies need to take a much more aggressive and much proactive step. The number one, which you're going to see throughout this report, I think the biggest takeaway you should see is that business email compromise is by far the most costly uh, of all the losses. So we said in the last screen, there was $3.5 billion in losses. Well, business email compromise alone, just that type of targeting from these cyber criminals make up $1.7 billion of that, right? So if you're a business owner, you need to understand that email is your biggest threat. That is the biggest point of entry. And what is business email compromise? Just real briefly, it is essentially a scam or social engineering type technique where the criminals are going to try to infiltrate one of your employees or maybe even your email account, right? Through phishing, through sending fake email scams, getting someone to hand over their login credentials, right? Now, there are some safeguards that are very simple, like MFA. We've done videos about that that can really help prevent this. But the reality is most businesses still aren't on the same page, right? And obviously, the numbers are proving it to us. These cyber criminals have extracted $1.7 billion of reported, again, I use the word reported, losses uh, from American businesses. Now, the IC3 uh, or FBI has a recovery team, and they're somewhat successful 
uh, in terms of if you can catch it early enough, right? So they've had about 1,300 incidents been reported to their recovery team. And again, that's not all of the incidents. Um, and if you report it early enough, and let's say you wired money to a cyber criminal and you're able to report it directly, get the FBI involved uh, within 24 hours, there's a chance that you can get that recovered and they become more and more successful over the years. However, if you delay, if you don't have an incident plan, if you don't report it in time, odds are if you wait longer than that, getting those funds back are nearly impossible. Again, I'm not going to read this word for word. I have a link in the description below where you can download this full report for yourself, but they give you a couple examples of how they were successfully able to recover some funds in a few cases. Another reoccurring theme that we've seen throughout 2019, again, uh, is the tech support fraud. And this tends to target individuals more than businesses in which the cyber criminal is calling uh, somebody pretending to be tech support, right? So we've actually seen a case where uh, the caller comes in, they pretend to be Mac or Apple support, and all of a sudden the victim allows the cyber criminal access to their computer, and the rest is history. Uh, next thing you know, they're transferring money out of bank accounts. I mean, it's really that severe. So you have to be really cautious if you're getting a phone call claiming to be tech support, or we see the IRS, or claiming to be any authoritative figure, Double check if you do have a contract with a tech support company or you let's say you have an Apple computer, just say no problem, I'll hang up and I'm going to go ahead and call Apple directly, right? That's the safest thing you can do. Never give over information, uh, never give access to your devices from somebody calling you out of the blue if it's unexpected, especially. That's a huge red flag. The third hot topic I'm going to cover, and unfortunately, this one is not going away. Uh, and it really is a little bit deceiving because the FBI reports a number of loss, or there's a, a number here associated of about $9 million in losses from ransomware. Now, that is just people paying the ransom. I can tell you from being a company that is involved with a lot of incident reporting, incident response for companies that have had ransomware, the ransomware cost is just the beginning. Uh, the true cost is much greater than that because there are losses of business, loss of revenue, uh, there is data that's just gone. So what is the price tag of a company's data if it's inaccessible anymore? Uh, and then there's reputation costs. There's credit monitoring costs, insurance costs, legal costs that can ensue. So this one, from a business standpoint, I see it being one of the most nasty types of cyber attacks out there. And if you're not familiar with the ransomware is, we can do a whole other video on that. But quick summary, it is basically a virus or malware uh, that can come in through phishing. It can come in through... Uh, again, that fake tech support scam, many ways where they infect your network with this virus, the virus or malware then ensues to encrypt all of your data across all your file shares, meaning that your data is encrypted, it's locked, you just have a simple text file now that says, hey, we've encrypted all your data. If you want the key to decrypt it, you must wire us X amount of funds. And typically it's Bitcoin and they can range, right? They'll do some research on your company and I've seen... Ransomware is as small as $5,000. I've seen some that are in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, again, so the FBI is telling us that this is still here. It's still happening. Just last year alone, there was over 2,000 complaints and over just about $9 million uh, in ransomware is paid. Something important to note, and, it, and the FBI is telling you this, paying the ransom generally works, but it doesn't always. There are cases where you get ransomware you send this this money, these Bitcoins, and you never get the, de the decryption keys. Again, majority of the time you do, but just note that that's a possibility that you may not get that data back. So high-level overview, if we look at it just by the numbers, again, $3.5 billion in reported victim losses, right? This is not other business costs we're talking about, just purely in either wiring funds or ransomware, uh, you know, ransoms through ransomware that have been paid. Um, again, this is growing. It's a bit concerning. I mean, I know there's a lot of effort that businesses that I work with are putting in, but the reality is we have to do more. Although, as you're going to see in a second, the United States is by far the biggest target. When we look internationally, uh, the United Kingdom is by far the second biggest target. So if you're watching this and you're in the UK, definitely need to be uh, cautious um, but when it comes to the United States, we are the biggest target. And within the United States, there are specific uh, states that you are in 
Um, we happen to be in California, and we are the top state in terms of number of victims that are reported, and also the top state in terms of losses uh, due to cybercrime. Not a huge surprise. California has one of the largest economies. Uh, we have a large population. Hence, we are a bigger target for cyber criminals. It makes sense. Another important thing to pay attention to in this report, and I always consult with customers and I'm telling them when I'm talking to these businesses, it's less and less about a technical hack, someone actually trying to breach your network, and it's more and more about tricking your employees. So if you look at these stats here in terms of the crime types and the actual victim counts, the reported incidents, phishing is by far the largest and it. There's vishing, smishing. This could be phone calls. It could be voice messages. Uh, a lot of times, typically it's emails that come through just trying to trick you or your employees. And what they're trying to do is get you to voluntarily hand over information or in some cases voluntarily wire funds. Uh, it is the most effective way. And so these cyber criminal uh, rings are spending more effort into that. They see the data just like this. They understand, hey, what's working, what's not. And we see them attacking people more than technology. Again, we alluded to this earlier, but by far the most profitable, if you were going to call it that, a type of crime is the business email compromise or what's called BEC, as you see on this page here, over $1.7 billion in losses. And it makes sense, right? If they can take over somebody's email and they can trick a company to just send funds, whether it's a CEO requesting somebody else pay an invoice, whether it's a vendor sending out invoices, but really your vendor has been compromised. So all of a sudden you've been told to change payment instructions uh, or wiring instructions. It's very easy to see. Again, I can personally tell you being involved with companies that have paid what they thought were legitimate invoices for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, but unfortunately it was their vendor that had been compromised. And so that would fall under a business email compromise. It's a very, very costly type of attack and very successful type of attack. So that was a quick run through on the highlights of the IC3 report. Uh, I really encourage you to download the full one. I'll put a link below in the description. You can download the full report for yourself, read it. Uh, again, if you're a business owner, this is extremely important for you to understand what are these threats? What do they look like? How costly are there? And what steps do your, does your business take? So I'll leave you with this. If you want to be proactive about it, take the first step, train your employees, make sure they're aware of these things, right? Have a training, a cyber awareness training program in place that effectively keeps them on their toes. They understand what the threats are, both from the business and themselves personally. It's extremely important. Number two, take a look at your network. Do you have at least the basics in place? Uh, do you have things like MFA, multi-factor authentication? We have a whole other video on that. Watch it, understand. If you don't have these things in place, start putting a plan together. And number three, have an incident plan, right? If for some reason a breach happens, maybe it's just an attempted attack or you get ransomware or someone's email is compromised, what steps do we take? Do you know what to do? Does your employee know what to do? It's extremely important. As you saw in this video and as you'll read in this report, the quicker you respond, the quicker you act, the higher the chance you have of recovering those funds if they've been stolen from you. So again, be proactive. Step one, read the report. If you need any help at all, Again, our contact information is below this video. We'd be happy to help, even if it's just some simple guidance and some, some free advice. Uh, we'd rather do that and help you stay protected than have a bigger issue on your hands. So again, thanks for watching. As always, if you like this video, if you found it useful, like it, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification in YouTube. And what that's going to do is send you a notification anytime we put out a new video like this. So again, appreciate you spending the time. Download it. Do your own research. Uh, we're here to help you and uh, stay safe out there.